I didn't start drinking coffee until like three years ago, so. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm still virgin lips. <laughs> Not really, but I'll, I'll try a little bit. You're trying it. Huh? You gotta try it. This could yeah, be I'm the change of your life. Actually, you know, now, if, if it at all, like, straight to bitter hits the side of your tongue. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, good. that's really good. Yeah. I don't know. I I think I like it yeah, less this way. Take a sip of that. Like, that more. Like, I think I like it. Like, I think I liked it, like, in a raw yeah. form. I don't know why. Episode 85. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm looking at the right camera this time. I looked at the episode the other day. I looked like I had a lazy eye. I was, like, looking at the wrong camera. I mean, like, subscribe to the YouTube. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we have an awesome guest tonight. Brought us samples we were tasting already. Um, Jeff Kling, Liberty City Roasters, welcome. He's already he's already you know tired Rambo out. A little, so a little clap for him. <laughs> yeah, we we thank you for that. He needs attention. <laughs> so you brought us your product, your coffee. Well, it, you know, obviously my conversation is not going to keep us awake, so I figured the caffeine would you know make up for that detraction. So I, I got a few things here, um, both cold brew. Uh, Ethiopian and Waking Dead. Okay, I'm drinking right now the Waking Dead. That was definitely I. I thought I liked the Ethiopian one, but then I had this one and ooh, it's smooth. But you were telling me like the breakdown. What's what is like the ratio of what we're drinking right now in terms of coffee to water? I guess would would you roast it in water? I don't know anything about this. Um, so. Cold brew is a brewing method. Okay. Um, you just take roasted coffee uh, at, at any any roast level, grind it up medium or coarser, and just soak it in water for 18 hours or more. Um, and then you just filter it. And voila. Um, it's like, so gra- you, like a gravity filter. Um, yeah, it, in essence. Um, I mean, there's there's lots of ways of doing it. Some people buy expensive filtering toddy systems, and it's like, you know what? You, you don't need to do anything fancy uh, mm. because the Dutch traders back in the, oh, gosh, 14, 1500s were doing it on, you know, galley ships crossing the ocean, and that's they actually invented cold brew coffee. With the people, the sailors. Is he good? Yeah. Is he good? Can he? Can you hear him okay? A little closer. A little bit closer? You're good. Yep. We're good. We're good. Uh, so, you. so you yeah. yes. coming across the ocean, you would have, <laughs> like from what I understand, yeah. I've read a little bit of history, water on ships wasn't really ever good to drink. So everybody on ships had to drink something else, which was usually wine. So did uh, you, they have, at least the mix. and they had, they had coffee back then too? Uh, they only really had coffee uh, available uh in any kind of a widespread usage from the 1500 on. So coffee was discovered as, as the legend of Kaldi um, would tell us, you know, probably in the 800, 900s, somewhere in, uh, in Ethiopia. Um, the, the, the legend is a Ethiopian goat herder uh, so, uh, it's always the goat herders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the story always starts out with goats. <laughs> that, uh, you know, it, it's very mountainous country, and the, the, the goats are up there, you know, munching on whatever they can. And when they were munching on the berries of a particular bush, then they would get, you know, excited and stay up all night long and climb trees and do all sorts of crazy stuff that, that goats can do. Um, it was nocturnal goats. Yeah, <laughs> not goats. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think of something wild to say. <laughs> I, abo- I aborted. <laughs> so, um, it, as, as the legend goes, Kaldi, uh, the goat herder, uh, cut off a branch and took it to his local shaman. And they thought, it's like, oh my gosh, this is bitter, this is nasty. And they just threw it into the fire. And then it organically roasted up and the smell was intoxicating. And then they figured out, oh, you know, once we've taken this these roasted seeds, you know, and, and mash them up, we could make them into a drink, and then it became something interesting. So basically, yeah, basically, 
the coffee plant is is sort of like a bush kind of thing, or what, how big is? Uh, yeah, we 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 can call them uh, bushes and trees, and kind of interchangeably. It's a it's a small, relatively small plant, but you know, depending upon the variety, they can get. Uh, they're often could be anywhere from like five feet tall up to maybe mm, eight feet tall. Okay, or yeah, because so I was gonna yeah. say if it's from Ethiopia, it's got to be a tall. Yeah, it's got to be, be, be tall, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think like yeah. the average average height in Ethiopia is like seven feet. Damn, that's an exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm six foot six, but in Ethiopia, you know, they, 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 they would probably call me shorty. Yeah. <laughs> they probably would. Do you run track or anything like that? Oh, I, I used to run a bit, um, you know, back in like high school and college, but that right. that was a long time. No ago. longer, no longer channeling your. No, I, 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 I run if I'm chased. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, as you should. That's crazy. Yeah. I would too. <laughs> I could choose. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, cheers to being chased. Yeah, cheers to being chased. <laughs> so, what? When did your obsession? begin with coffee because you Mm. with like a passion like this i i would think that you've probably been into this for a fair amount of fair amount of years uh yeah that that, that's a great question um so it started um i think during uh our trip to panama um so back in gosh when was it exactly 2005 2006 amy my better half um we were like hey where do you want to go on vacation and so we went on to like kayak explorer and it was like okay you know anywhere in the world you know filter by price where can we go direct non-stop because you know yeah don't want to actually transfer planes if we can help it <laughs> Such a i was headache. like oh panama city is like 425 dollars you pretty sure you know it's like Okay, it was in Panama. Who cares? It's cheap. <laughs> and it was the canal. A little bit of jungle. There's actually a really nice mall there. A is there? Yeah, now there is. I don't know if there was in 2006 or 2005. <laughs> Can't speak to that. We, we, we had some great food, and it did in Panama City. The the views are spectacular. They have this roadway that goes out into the water um, to, to an island, and uh, so you can just like walk out there or drive out there at night, and the entire city. The silhouette is across the water. It's really something. Yeah, I, I I have been to Panama City, and I always tell people that are interested to get, or I mean, I don't always. I've said it a handful of times. Um, if you're interested in getting into South America or that Latin American travel, like Panama yeah. City is kind of where you want to start. Because it kind of it's it's very easy to navigate. It's just like along yeah. the coast. You have like the presidential palace is here. You can like walk right up to the door and knock on the door. Practically, it's like guarded by sixteen year olds. <laughs> 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 there's like the jungle. There's the beach. There's the canal, and then that's it. Pretty wow. much. There's a lot to do there, but it's very in like a very yeah, limited. Yeah, it's easy area. to get around. It's very and easy to get around there. People were. Um, very nice, very hospitable. Um, and so we didn't really discover coffee in Panama City, but we had this side trip to northern Panama. So we, we, we flew up to David and then grabbed a rental car and drove it up into the hills. Okay. Um, I like your style. And, you know, because the, the driving there is like, it's it's so fun. I mean, probably not in the city, but it, I wouldn't know because I didn't do it. Oh, uh, no. So, But, but driving the, up into the hills is amazing. The driving in Panama City is no joke. I, one time I got into a cab and at nighttime and I asked the dude where his lights were and he was just like, no lights. And I was like, all right, all right whoa, whatever. I'm already in here. So. <laughs> um, yeah, and. The, the places that we're staying were surrounded by uh, rainforest and jungle, and we're, we're almost at the equator, right? Yeah. But it's like a perfect, beautiful spring day year-round, except in the windy season, which what is What time no of year did you go? Um, we were there in, um, yeah, in, in mid to late March. Okay. And it was incredible, because like it, when, when you were – in Panama City, oh, it, it was you know hot, hot, right? Um, and then David was 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 even worse on on the coast. But we like immediately grabbed the rental car and and drove up. And as you're 
climbing up to two, three, four thousand feet, it just gets so comfortable, mm. regardless of 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 the the weather because of just the elevation off the equator. Um, it was just like this perfect spring day all the time, you know, and and, and a little mist in the morning and at night. So it was like it was spectacular. And uh, you're not doing a good job selling it. <laughs> <laughs> we might cancel this show right now and go to Panama. Right? <laughs> yeah, it, it it was it was just incredible. We, so we, we we stayed in this like uh, incredible rustic chateau mm. with their own private cabin, with with their own little uh, fireplace, and uh, they had these like incredible home cooked you know breakfasts and dinners there, and we. They were surrounded by coffee farms everywhere. So coffee is, is we, we didn't know at the time, but we, we, we learned a lot. Um, coffee is a really interesting plant. It wants to be in a tropical or subtropical environment, but it doesn't like heat. So it really wants to be, has to be, you know, up in, you know, these gorgeous steep mountain areas because it wants to be at 70, 75 so degrees. So it likes the year jungle round. humidity, but it doesn't like the hot, hot sun yeah. baking heat. Yeah, it, it, it wants springtime temperatures, but it wants to, you know, be in that, you know, gorgeous tropical environment. Yeah, and that's like, is that because of the soil up at that nature? Or is it just like the, t- is it just like the sun baking temperatures? Um, cause I don't think it would grow well during like at the coast anyway, cause this, it does it grow in sand like this. Ad? Um, it would technically grow, but it would not thrive. Okay. So if, if, if you tried to grow it in a tropical environment, um, not up at elevations, it would really struggle. Could you it, it grow? It's not like being in heat, in the heat like that. Could you grow coffee hydroponically? Oh, absolutely. You yeah. could do anything hydroponically. That's, yeah. that's true. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I, my my neighbor at the roastery is a hydroponic farmer. He grows microgreens and duckweed and all sorts of really cool stuff. I give what? him coffee. He gives me microgreens. It's it's awesome. I love he, microgreens. He, he, They're the best. Baby, the little micro arugula. Oh, now you got yeah. your your micro yeah, it, cilantro. It, it, it's so sharp. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Right. It's a, it's it's so elegant too. It makes the dish look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being so serious, dude. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> you start romanticizing over your greens over yeah. here. <laughs> I quit the shot. Go back to cooking. <laughs> Just take your headphones off and be like, "I need to. Su- I need to saute." Yeah. So, I need so, to. So of course, the uh, it, it, so so here we are. This this mountain chateau, right? And my exposure to coffee prior to that, and this this is at this point, I'm in my 30s, right? And coffee to me was never about enjoyment, pretty much ever, um, except the, the occasional place maybe, you know, in an Italian restaurant in New York City with my parents or something. So, like, you were I, a utility drinker. Absolutely. You yeah, it, it, it was literally, bus. okay, you know, it's it's a cup in the morning to, to wake up. And, you know, if, if you've ever been to certain corporate headquarters, the, you know, the coffee is typically really abysmal. I mean, it's it's it's, it's bitter, it's astringent. Um it's it's really all about you know the brown cup of caffeine. Yeah, um, it's just sludge. And, and it's not even really the same thing, right? Because it, it folders. When I was younger, I remember oh my thinking coffee was just yeah. St- you just threw it in the th- you you know I would see my dad occasionally you know throw it in the filter thing, put it in the top, and I was just like, all right, kind of looks like you know the hot cocoa powder, but if adults drink it. Mm-hmm. And then it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I realized that you know you just had. You, you actually had a coffee bean and then like that dust you saw the people drinking was the grinds of that product. Yeah. And then, you know, probably 20 years later, I actually started drinking. <laughs> I don't think I started drinking coffee until I'm 33 now. I was probably 20, 30, you think? Yeah, 30. Wow. Like three years ago. Damn. That new to it. I started out smooth with some ice mocha lattes. Hell yeah. Oh, wow. Which I still thrive on. <laughs> <laughs> Not to embarrass anybody in the room. <laughs> yeah, so so originally you um, you decided that you liked dessert. Yeah, I liked chocolate milk. And then you figured milk. out that part of that was actually coffee. I liked chocolate milk. So I was like, ah, man, I'll just, I'll just like integrate chocolate milk into coffee and then back down the chocolate. So now I'm like, I'm down to like a half a pump. 
chocolate. Nice. It's delicious. So cool. Yeah. I won't I won't do that to this ever though. I promise. <laughs> 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 Just, you'll just like, you'll like feel it in your bones. Me put some like a squirt of Hershey's chocolate in here. Mix it <laughs> well, up. Well there, there are some syrups that are really good. What yeah, do you like, mean like um, yeah, flavor syrups. Yeah, I mean, you could make your own extract using like you know vanilla or hazelnut um, or, or cinnamon. That's pretty easy to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Monin makes some nice organic syrups that I like. I'll have to look into that. Um, so you were you were a young thirties, yeah, navigating Panama, and all these coffee farms. Was it just like they're, they're the, everywhere? You was it just the environment? Them. And then the freshness of the coffee that kind of got you into it? Well, yeah. So, so, you know, after you walk from your, your cabin into the, the chateau for, for breakfast in the morning and, you know, they, they put the cups on the table and, and then you start looking at each other and your eyes are like going, why does like, this is really good? Is this coffee? I don't know. We're in Panama. It's like, how do we ask in Spanish? Like, what is this? Um, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you know, it, and then their, their English is excellent and, they were like, oh, you know, senor, you know, that, that that's a cafe, but you, you would call it coffee in America. Um, and we we're just like, really? Yeah, like, like it, this it's like, how can we find out more about this? Where, where can we get this? And like, well, you know, everywhere. And so we we visited a few different um So uh, up, until, farms up until that point, you were like a Folgers guy? Um at that point I'd 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 stepped up my game a little. You know, I I was I was doing Melita. Okay, because because with the subscription, you know, <laughs> they give you a uh, a four cup maker. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, you were living large. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. You know, and then every you know, without doing anything, every six weeks, like here's another bag. <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> just like magic. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, it was, it was really before there was you know Amazon, Amazon or whatever. Really, right, yeah. that company pr- was probably bought by Amazon. <laughs> we were <laughs> <Could maybe. laughs> Yeah, they actually have a, a big roastery in southern New Jersey. So as he drive down the highway if you go uh at the right time of day it'll just like boom you Hit know, you. Uh, oh yeah you'll be just driving through this fog of coffee roasting smell it's like when you drive by mcdonald's and you just smell that you probably get the same feeling with that it just no. hits you in the face not exactly what do you mean what are you talking about dude coffee's way better than mcdonald's uh, yeah i know but i'm talking about the aroma in general like <laughs> sure. you drive by mcdonald's you smell the fries it's like you drive by this coffee place, you smell the coffee. Gilmore's like that commercial right now that keeps like going on repeat on Hulu where it's just like the guys are in the car chanting McDonald's to try and convince the driver to pull off the exit. And then they're like, yeah. And I'm like, that would never happen. <laughs> it turns out it does. It does happen. In my car every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those guys were in the commercial weren't four years old. They were grown adults. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I... I mean, have you had an egg McMuffin with cheese? <laughs> I mean, it's been a minute, but now that you said something, I'm kinda, I kind of want one. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to play that, that oh, series. I definitely yes, want one. Yes, right two now. words for you. Breakfast burrito. Oh, man. We just had actual burritos. Yeah. I'm still hungry. That's Shout out. Bad. I got problems. <laughs> no, I'm drinking this yeah. coffee, and it's oh, dude. nighttime. You're never going to go to sleep. You just stay up all night eating. Yeah, just eating myself to sleep. <laughs> Crying. Oh yeah, so so um, we went to one estate in particular, uh, the Hartman Estate, uh, with with two ends, and um, God, it was it was it was such an adventure. Um, so the the daughter uh, of the family, Elise Hartman, uh, took us on a tour for oh my God, it was it was like three hours, and time just slowed. It felt like we were there. All day, and we, we get to see every aspect of not only the, the farm, but the production. Because there's a lot of farms in the area, but a lot of them don't do anything other than just harvest and bag. Yeah, well, only the larger farms have processing facility. facilities. Yeah. And we, we get to see it like, okay, you know, here are the, the, the cherries. And then here's, here's the machine that, that slowly, gently removes the, the, the mousselage off. And, you know, we have the, the dripping honey of the, of the fruit. Because coffee is actually a seed. It's not actually a bean, even though we call it that. Mm. And then the, the seeds go into multiple cascades of, of water that, you know, because of the different gravities, you know, 
float it and separate it out so that you end up with the, the right size of seeds separated so that as a roaster I can have consistency of the size of what I'm doing. And it's like, it was spectacular. And then uh, during a break, her mom brought out fresh coffee, of course, and also her homemade baked goods that like to this day, you know, just, you know, I could dream about it. And I, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a great trip. And, 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 that and, down, and that was just baked like goods, a state coffee, North Panama. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It, and um, it was, a, it was an epiphany moment. Yeah. It was just like coffee was to me no longer just like it, you put it so succinctly. This it wasn't a utility beverage. It was it, it became a, a passion. It became a, a a target and emphasis for for energy. My own face. It's like okay, how do I have that experience after I come home? How do I? You know, I, I bought some beans, you know, 15 pounds worth. The, it, it was very amusing to the, uh, uh, the, the pre-TSA agents. When I cut back home, they you know, opened up my luggage and looked at it and did, looked, at, looked at me and just closed it and just waved me on. <laughs> They're like, hey, we got a smuggler here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got yeah, a whole I, load of coffee beans. Yeah, I, I think the way they, they looked at me was like, you're not even trying to bring drugs just get get out of here stop wasting my time <laughs> <laughs> so when you you were looking were you looking when you got back were you looking to have kind of like a mini experience that would make you relate back to that experience or were you were you actually seeking out like a better product at that point uh for yeah that's a great question so uh for me it was okay that like the it was that cup of joy in the morning and how do we keep doing that how do we keep having that um because it was good enough that me it made you kind of like take a pause in the morning that's what you were looking for like what was yeah it it it, it was like imagine for your entire life all you had was schlitz or miller high life and and i'm not trying to to denigrate any of those products how dare you but then (laughs) for the first time ever you had a a Samuel Adams or an, or an, uh, an IPA, right? Or um, let's say you had had box wine your entire life. And mm. the, for the first time ever, you had, you know, Opus One. It suddenly, your perspective of what that is and what it means to you. And, it's and like, the, this, was, this is an option? Yeah. This was an option all along? Like, did yeah. you feel betrayed? by like fake coffee at all once you had this where you like well why are we drinking anything but this um it, i find that that happens to me when i have something that's like really really good like if i have a good dining experience or find a good restaurant or yeah. something like i it ruins everything else like and then i have to have <laughs> that level of those things now does that right. did that happen with coffee where you just uh for, for me yeah yeah um, yeah, and, and then it just became like, there were some places I could go, like, you know, let's say in New York City, you know, if you, if you go there for like a, a special night or weekend, uh, after we do whatever we're doing, yeah, we could go down to Little Italy, and we could go to Ferrara's, and it'll be good coffee. It won't be on the same level, but it'll be good. Um, but, you know, if you take me to a diner, or even most restaurants, I might offer the order of the coffee, but most of the time, I'll just be like, I'll, I'll push it to somebody else at the table, or just say, yeah, sorry, I, I'm, it's, it's not what I'm hoping for, um, or, or what I expect anymore. Mm. Yeah, that, that's happening to me a lot these days. One of the things that happens frequently is my wife, who's here right now, um is really good at cooking so like things like steak pretty pretty much mastered in our house Mm -hmm. so when we go out to eat and then i see the steak i'm like am i gonna (laughs) i want to order it but at the same time like i'm gonna order i'm just gonna be like this is this is like whoever cooked this like either it's not a good cut or it wasn't cooked properly or it's just like so i've just learned with certain things it's just like 
avoid the disappointment altogether and just don't order it when you go out. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, we're, it, it changes our perspective mm. as to oh, we, what, what does that food, that wine, that music, that coffee, that, that tea, that anything mean to us? And, you know, does the bar change where it is to, to, to what we require to experience when we have that? It's like, oh, well, yeah, it's not going to be aerial steak. So I might as well order the chicken because I don't want to be disappointed, right? Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah same thing. Yeah, it's because it's almost like it's almost like a in a personal attack on me when the <laughs> steak isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> and he did this on it's purpose. Like somebody somebody went out of their way today to ruin this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like, at least. <laughs> Targeting table thirty six. Um, yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're in like your young thirties now, uh, an aw- an awoken or. You know, you've had this awakening. I was going to call it an awakening, but it wasn't going to be a good joke. Fix yourself. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you've had this coffee. You've come back to America. What were you doing in your life then? That mm. uh, I was working in IT. Um, okay. Oh. At that point, I was. Oh God! At that point in time, yeah, I was a sales engineer, working in IT. Um, it was a you know, pretty cool life, so we could afford to, you know, travel and do things, you know, a couple of times a year. And, um, you so live, living, living well, drinking coffee, traveling God, around. At that point, we were. I was living in a condo in in West Trenton, New Jersey. Okay, um, which was like it was at the time. It was great because you know we had the Trenton Farmers Market was like a mile and a half away and they, you know, they were open like every day. It's like, you know, all sorts of amazing uh, Polish and Eastern European meats and cheeses. I mean, they, they literally have like 50 types of, I would call them like a smoked sausage or a cured sausage. I'm, I don't mean to mischaracterize it, but, and, and the level of what, it, you know, it is just incredible. So I promised when I first discovered it that I'd work my way through that entire yeah. case Never made it close. Just, just <laughs> yeah. But by the time I, I discovered, it's like okay, any of these six or ten things are like, all of them are more amazing than the next one. Yeah. That just that you just give up. Yeah. Beaten into submission by kielbasa. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mar- like it's like the decreasing marginal benefit. It's just you know like I can't really eat. Like there's no way that that's going to be any better than this. And it's like I'm just so full. Yeah, I know that feeling. I'm definitely. When it comes to kibasa, I, I, I love it. I just love sausage. I love bacon. I love. I'm a big meat guy. So, oh. you get me going on like cured meats and things like that. Well, I'd, I'm your guy. Uh, on the weekends, you guys are in your Yardley, right? We're in Yardley, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Morrisville is just down the road. Have you been to the Garden Market there? I haven't. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so go. Okay. Because they, they they'll have. Um, an amazing case, just chock full of smoked pork bliss. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it I'm going to have to have my pick, people pick, look pick into this three or three <laughs> or four things. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah. Food to mm-hmm. me, food and experiences. Like some people, I, I definitely choose to spend my money on, on such things like good food and, you know, uh, an experience of some kind, if it can be paired together, that's even better. But I won't really spend mo- as much money on like material things as I will on like activities and especially food activities. Like if you can take me someplace, I'm like, man, yeah, well, whatever it costs, it costs because like it's going to be a great time and we're going to have like a really good meal. And that like that to me is, um, it's like one of the most important things now. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, Especially after the last year that we had. That, that are then memories. And yeah, you, yeah, I just, I I think that I, I don't know, I grew up eating out. Um, I grew up, like, my mom was, like, I had a single mom, so, like, we didn't, like, cooking wasn't always, like, 
the option that day. So like we would eat out different places. So I grew out like going out to eat wasn't that big of a deal by the time I got a little older. And then once I got closer to like the college age, I discovered probably like later in high school, I, um, I had already worked in like an Italian restaurant that just was the best. So it wasn't, I just, I just grew up in Italian. Like, so I just knew, I only knew that. And I started, a friend of mine was really into going out to eat in the city or going to New York to eat. And, you know, a couple of times I went out to eat with them and I was like 16 or 17 and they were like 21, 22. And I was like, wow, this is different kind of experience. Um, I didn't know you could like go out and like have an experience like that like a place like a Steven star restaurant or um, I don't know what other places I'm thinking about. Not like your hibachi type places where like the food was actually the experience where like it was either the the pairings or the, how it was plated or what was cooked or, you know, whatever that experience was. And and then it just kind of just completely changed me forever. So by the time I was like 20, I was probably a food snob. (laughs) I just kind of just, I just wanted to go out to eat at nice places because it's like, well, what, at this next place, I've never been here. Like, what's this? Like, what's that going to be like? It was just kind of what I was was into. And I used to feel guilty for, like, spending money on stuff like that. And now I'm just like, that's, it's worth that's it. what I spend money on. Yeah, it's, it's worth it. It is what it is. I like to eat. but yeah, Absolutely. Whatever gives anyone that enjoyment, it, it, it enriches their life, you know, that gives them what I would call, like, an immersive, authentic experience. Yeah. yeah it, whatever you know, makes your eyes go wide or blows your hair back. I mean, right? Yeah, d- it's, it was that in the beginning. And now now that oh, I say, like, I'm old or I'm 33. So, like, when you say <laughs> that certain people, they're like, you're not old. But I am. A, I remember I, 33. I've <laughs> experienced, like, different. Tra- like, now I look at it differently because when we go out to him, we have that experience, like, set for later this evening or for this weekend or for next week whatever that is it's kind of like it's a dedicated time and that i'm not working or i'm not engaging on the internet or on the phone or something like that it's more like um i have to be absorbed or immersed in it Mm. so instead of going out to like a shitty place to eat where i'm just like all right well this place sucks the atmosphere sucks i got kids crying food's gonna be okay like i'm here trying to give this person my attention but like it's not even the right environment for that Mm. so it's kind of i also look at like at that level now where it's like is this is the food up to par that we're going to be happy with that we want to go is like the service on point is like the environment like you're not going to go to chuck you're not going to go to date night at chuck e cheese and expect to have like a good night date night or i hop yeah or i hop (laughs) Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how wait, should I know? Wait, wait a second. What, what do you have, have against waffles? Nothing against waffles. A little something against IHOP. <laughs> you know, it's like, come hungry, leave happy. It's like, come hungry, leave with diarrhea. Like, <laughs> yeah. I do it at home. <laughs> it's true. Gilmer's a chef. Yeah. I'm retired. Oh, you're retired. I'm retired. <laughs> he's, like, he's hung up his tongs. Yeah, dude, they're up. Chef yeah. coat's up, man. Yeah, I'm putting it back on. <laughs> so when so when you go out, you, you must set the bar like insanely high. He just doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> well, because like so so growing up, you know, Andrew said, uh, you know, he started going out with his friends at a young age, developed a, a palate by twenty. Uh, like with me, my dad is also a chef, and he he used to bring home crazy shit at the time when i was maybe like eight years old eating caviar and i'm like what am you know so some people caviar is like something insane like to me i hate it i don't like caviar it's too salty but it's like um my dad whenever we used to go out he used to critique food as well whenever we'd go somewhere he'd be like oh you know like this is this and that look this meat's like not medium or this and that so that kind of unfortunately came on to me so when I go out to eat, I don't say it out loud anymore, but I think of it. I'm like, I don't want to ruin people's experience, but I'm like, eh, you know, this this asparagus is overcooked. It's a little too green for me, things like that. But, uh, you know, I try to I try to keep it to myself now. <laughs> but um, yeah. I hear it. I yeah. listen. <laughs> I listen. I, that, that same thing happens to me, too, uh, in construction. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm, yep. like, um, I'm a member of a certain, like, fitness, you know, business and like they did a renovation and like there's you know like a lot of people are like 
Oh, wow, it looks, looks so great. And I'm like, it looks so great. It's just like, dude, where the tile met this floor over here, like, they just, they didn't, they didn't plan for that. So the tile just kind of stops. And, like, this one's got a triangle. Or, like, stuff's, unf like, not finished or designed right. Like, uh -huh. we do things so thought out that when I go to someone's house and they're like, oh, we just had this amazing contractor. And I'm like, dude. The guy, what did he do? Was he is he blind? <laughs> did he did he caulk all these trim up with like with his like? Does is he an amputee? Yeah, did like, he break his arm? What you, what's going on <laughs> here? Like you like my expectation for quality on those things is like I can go. It's like the Matrix. Mm. You know when he discovers and he sees all the numbers going around. Yeah. When I go into a place that's yeah. poorly constructed, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like just twitching. You know. What I'm I saying? I noticed that firsthand that that time we did the go kart day. Yeah. Um, we were all sitting at the restaurant. It was interesting experiencing that because from my world, in my world, I'm kind of into media and food. What the whole, so, the whole team, what was like everybody critiquing the construction? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you guys were, you guys were talking about the, the penny tile on the floor. Like, oh, I feel sorry for whoever had to do that. And I was like, what, why, what's wrong with the penny tile? I was like, you see, you see where the lines is this and that. Like you can see all the imperfections if you look in the light. And I was like, oh, I would have never noticed that. So but that's like when we sell our product to mm -hmm. people that's like whether it's like the content creation or custom homes or like we're building apartments like that level of detail is being brought to either like the actual product that you see your project management process that you don't see so many it's so frustrating when you get backlash or negative energy from people and they don't realize the level of detail and everything that went into what they're like upset about mm -hmm. it's like you're not appreciating what we tried to make happen here for you right kind of mm. things like so it's like when you meet someone like yourself that's so truly passionate about something even though i'm not passionate about coffee to the same level we'll work on that i'm pa <laughs> yeah yeah we can i mean i'm open to change I, i'm open to changing i i'm here for you yeah i'm glad i found the support structure but like i i'm passionate about other things to the same level that i think that that yeah. translates if you're open to it like if you're ignorant to it, then that's on you. That's right. not any. That's your fault. But I think that I can be so serious about what I'm doing that like I try and respect other people and what they're doing. Like, sure. Weirdly enough, like I see like my trash man, like I know which trash guy is better than the other trash yeah. guy. Because <laughs> like the one, like I was watching, I was stuck behind him the one day, and I could just see how he was getting off the truck and like carrying the things over and loading it and the other dude was just smashing trash cans and he was like the truck was having to stop for that guy yeah and the other for the other guy was just the smooth. other guy was just smooth yeah like i was like wow i like it's like i just appreciate you because i understand you're just trying to do it to that level it mm -hmm. doesn't you know so when like ariel was like i met like the coffee guy <laughs> i was like mm -hmm. i can i can get into coffee yeah i can get into that I definitely, I definitely want to hear more about like how you went from being an IT guy to being like, all right, at farmers markets slinging seeds. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, Not beans. <laughs> so, hmm. How do we do this in a way that's interesting, entertaining, and funny? I mean, it is. It's a drastic change. I find it interesting. We could act it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could act it out. <laughs> Boom! Record a movie. So you came back from Panama. Yeah, you were getting in more and more into the coffee. You were were you trying like different roasting techniques and like that or uh, so, so initially I wasn't roasting, um, although it, it didn't take long for me to figure out that if I wanted that level of experience, I I figured out awfully quickly that I had to roast. You had to it, cut it, out it, all the middlemen. Yeah, yeah, because it. Um, so once. You, it, Coffee seeds or, or, or beans, right? They they have a good shelf life while they're raw or green, unroasted, um, like like popcorn. But once you cook it, roast it, um, the shelf life, uh, even with a good oxygen barrier, is is pretty limited. Um, so even if you keep them in a you know a vacuum uh, bag or something. It, Vacuum bag, uh, airtight container with you know, with they're full up and there's very little extra in there. Um, you ideally want to use them within, you know, three or four weeks. Oh, um, it's that soon. 
Oh, I yeah, do, well, ideally, you want to. I mean, there, there are some people with palates, you know, far more advanced than mine who will detect differences between, let's say, day 10 and 14 or day 14 and 17. I, I think fresh roasted coffee stored well, um, you'll get, I, depending upon your brew method, you, you'll want to use it within probably two to three weeks. Uh, is it, you're asking about, about the, the beans like before or after roasting it or, or grinding it? It's, I'm saying when you're saying that like three to four weeks, you're saying the beans or when it's already ground? Um, I know it's when it's roasted. So you oh, take like the fruit and then you roast it. And then once it's roasted, it is like a, sh- a four week like life. Yeah, it, pre- preferably three. Um, now, if, if, if you take fresh roasted coffee and you put it into really good foil bags, you know, and then uh, immediately heat seal it, you might have, let's say, two months. How long does it stay in a bag like this? Um, I would prefer to see that my customers use that within three to four weeks if they're using a normal brewing method, hot or cold. Okay. But if it's for espresso, I would prefer to that the customers can use it within let's say two to two and a half weeks. Okay. They're, they're, it's they're, a more concentrated process. Uh, well, espresso as a brewing method is, it's so technical. Um, and the aspects of aroma and oils and intensity of flavor, um, it only stays at its peak for like so long. And even though it would be entirely enjoyable, at let's say three weeks instead of two and a, two weeks, ten days, two and a half weeks, it's no longer what it was. It, you would abs- you doing some blind tasting, you would completely pick up on it. Just you, whether or not you're, it's, it's starting to decompose. I, I, essentially, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, when, once oxygen gets at it, um, it it's gonna go. It, it you, may still be fine. Do but it's you not listen, gonna be what it was anymore. When you listen to this, do you realize how in over our heads we were? When we were going to do that. Yeah, I almost, my business partner and I almost um, bought slash built a coffee shop uh, business type thing. Um, <laughs> which, like, the decision was made on a, <laughs> early in the week. By the weekend, I owned an espresso machine <laughs> that yeah. I still don't know how to use. But Ariel's excellent at it. And then, like, a couple weeks later, like, the deal fell through. But, like, when I'm listening to you talk right now, I'm like, we didn't know any of this. <laughs> he knows so much. Oh, my God. It sounds we all very dodged eloquent. dodged that bullet. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> we would have made terrible coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it, it, technically, you're, it, you, you need to step it up a little because it, it's actually your job to make coffee in the morning. Yeah. You know, it, it says in the Bible, right, he brews. And, you know, that's what you're <laughs> supposed to be doing. That. Yeah, I, br- I brew over stress. and <laughs> 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 I brew in the morning for sure. Oh, I brew. <laughs> just, not, just not coffee. <laughs> um, so you, you became a bit of a coffee snob coming back from Panama. Uh, I don't know about snob, but I, I became passionate about it. Okay. I became interested in it. Um, and coming from a technical background, you know, when, when you have that uh, type of... Uh, the IT background. Yeah. Yeah, when, when, when you get a, a technical approach to things, then it's like, okay, here's what I want. I want that experience. How do I get there? You know, and you, you, you analyze it and you research it. and I can so, relate to that. Yeah. So, so it how does it how does it start? Well, it, it starts the way like that anybody would. Okay, hmm. Um, well, I I've been drinking mail order Melita. How do I maybe buy a bag of this from these people and maybe get what I want, which ideally would be great, right? Um, but even even today, um, you know, regardless of like budget, that's not that easy to do. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there's any number of roasters that you can go to or shops, you know, even in Philly or New York or wherever, where it's like, you know what? They call themselves a roastery and, you know, they, they put a, a roast date on the bag and yada, yada. But it's, 
It's like that's that is not the highlands of Panama. That that's not this explosion of of fruit and delicate flavors and and aroma. That, so it's that, like that, that doesn't make roasters. me close my eyes and stop my day. Mm. How do I do that? And um, so it was like, hmm. All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to buy what I want. So how do I get there? And yeah, so very quickly I discovered, hmm, I'm going to have to learn how to roast coffee. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I roasted a lot, a lot of really bad coffee. For, so were you for like, is that like happening? <laughs> no, like, no. <laughs> it was, it's not easy. <laughs> did, you, did you ever feel like you wanted to just quit? Were you like, this, I can't do this. This is disgusting. Uh, or would you always, did you like, it, I was, was never, it like not that bad? I was, I was often disappointed, but never discouraged. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how like, did it take, now are you roasting this in like a pot? Like, I don't really know what this equipment looks like. Is this in your kitchen or did you have to buy equipment to do this? Like, what are you, what are you doing to roast the coffee? Uh, yes, I've, gosh, um, done so many things. Uh, cast iron pan, uh, air popper. Um, this rotating toaster oven thing with a drum inside, boy, that they're not very good. Um, and, <laughs> and then um, uh, after after many years, um, I started using like a high tech version of uh, of an air pop machine. Okay, okay called, called the Fresh Roast. And then it was just like, oh, this is. Hey, sweetie, try this. She goes like, "Yeah, it tastes like coffee." Hey, she doesn't have the same appreciation for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it tastes like coffee to me is like usually what she would respond with. But suddenly, she would like look at me and goes, "Yeah, this is pretty good." Yeah, that yeah. That, that, that that's about as much of a, as praise as I'll ever get from her. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the the other phrase that I heard a lot is, "Okay, when are you going to get?" all this coffee stuff out of my house. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so after a number of years of that, um, and I wanted to change, I wanted to get away from IT sales. I mean, it was, it was economically good. And I was, I was very fortunate. So I was able to uh, look at my life and say, what do I want to do next? You know, this is something I'm passionate about, but after a while, you know, everyone, uh, coworkers, friends, family, they're like, this is what you should be doing. Really. You, you should, uh, you should think about this seriously. Well, just because of your, like your passion that people could see and, and, you know, speak to, or was it that you had started to roast things that people were like, wow, you're really talented. Uh, yeah, well, it definitely wasn't, you know, my personality. Yeah, it, it was. It was, it was <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they would be like, hey, you know, um, when you're coming to that meeting tomorrow, um, it, bring some coffee with you. Hey, you got any of the good stuff? <laughs> um, and, yeah, they, they would look at each other while they're drinking. And it's like it, it wouldn't be so much the conversation as the knowing looks back and forth that they would take a sip and, and then the enforced silence of the experience. It was like, mm. oh, I must be doing something right. Yeah, you know, it's not my day job per se, but you know the, the stuff that I'm bringing to these meetings. Like, okay, hmm, interesting. Yeah. Um, and um, in, in the tech world, you know, often there's opportunities where um, they'll have you know these pretty good packages, you know, to to give you the opportunity to move on if you want to. And it's like, like a little mm. severance package. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know what? If I want to, you know, go from one company to another, I, c- I could take a break in between and that would be fine. But let me take time and explore this and see if I can make this into a viable business. It's already, at that point, I'd been doing it for uh, roasting on professionally for got 10 or 11 years or something. Wow. Uh, so now yeah. you're like, now you're like a young 40s. Um well, it, I'm well preserved. Yeah. Well my preserved. on on yeah, my, my generation, you know, ate a lot of canned goods. <laughs> the preservatives, they you know what you are what you eat. So I'm I'm preserved. I, I'm, I'm I'm actually 53. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I would not have yeah. guessed that. Same. I would not have guessed yeah. that. And in Panama with the exchange rate, I'm 82. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, 
It is a tax haven, though. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is. It, and it's it, it someday go. It's 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 like it is literally one of the most beautiful places we've ever been. Uh, the, the drive from northern Panama up to the Costa Rican border, it's not that long of a distance, but it'll take you hours and hours and hours because every time you go around a bend, and there's a lot of bends, it'll be like another vista where you have to go eh, pull out of the car, you know, pull the handbrake up, go out, take pictures, 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 pictures. You know, look at the birds and the, and this new section of tropical rainforest that's even better than the one that was like 50 yards behind you uh, or meters because you're, you know, they use meters down there. They don't understand imperial stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah. you continue on your way and two minutes later you're pulling over again. And it, I, I'd like to say I'm exaggerating about that, but I'm, I'm not. It's it's awesome country. Wow. Um so yeah, yeah. You know, where, where where was I? Oh yeah. So so you you were like, starting to like contemplate your yeah. intermediate, you know. Um, so it was like okay, I've I've done pretty well. I can I can afford to take a break, and it, you know, like hmm, can I take this coffee thing and make it into a real business? So I I, I crunched some numbers, and I was like hmm, oh well, I, I I think I can. I, I can at least afford to give it a shot and see what happens. You know, and then I can always say, oh, well, that didn't work. So you, you know, calculated kind of like what you were willing to sink into it, what your exit price would be, like all that's like kind of like how detailed mm. did you get? Because you're an analytics guy. Like how detailed? I used a spreadsheet. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, yeah. You talk multifunctional. Yeah, yeah, yeah me yeah. and Excel, we, we get along well. <laughs> <laughs> rows and columns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Do you shade your rows and columns? Um, if um, I'm embarrassed to, to, to say the uh, yeah the the title oh. areas I, I usually do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I do yeah. it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah, but 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 do you put filters on every single column afterward? No. Yeah. Dude, I'll show them this See, spreadsheet. I just I just finished. Like, it's about ninety five percent finished. I built a like a spreadsheet system, Excel system, that monitor that like takes information from our budgetary system. And our selection system, mm. and then integrates that information so that when the project's actually going on, what ends up being purchased is then that information is transferred back to finance so that we can report back to the customer what we actually spent and the differences between them. Oh, cool. So, wow. like, incredible detail. And our designers are not happy about yeah. it. <laughs> They're like, we're not using that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <it's a> <laughs> Yeah, I spent yeah, the week on this. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, think we, I think we're using this. <laughs> so that could still flip back to them automatically, as opposed yeah, to I have running a report and then handing them. Something. No, yeah, it does it all the thing, and it just like cool. updates all Love these it. other reports, mm. which are all like sectioned alphabetically. So it's like, for instance, like section um, L is like trim and trim finishes. So it's like down mm. by each room casing like we're doing like multi-step or like multi like level trim so it's like how many steps of the trim are there what's the serial number on all the trims like uh -huh. what color is it? what's the finish like all that stuff because we don't we are having a lot of problems with how much detail we're building and then how many projects we're building with that amount of detail and then like not being able to track it adequately so when mm -hmm. somebody's like, oh, no, I spoke to so-and-so, she hated that faucet that came in, even though we picked it out nine months ago, like, we got to change that. Well, when did that happen? Or that faucet's not available. Like, well, we got to pick something else. We'll pick out something that matches the upstairs bathroom, blah, blah, blah. And it's like somebody else that had nothing to do with this project now can make those decisions or observe them or make decisions based upon that information. Yeah, that, that, that resonates. We, we've got an old Victorian and um, the lady who owned it, uh, she had been a, a smoker, inside smoker. Mm. Mm. So a real smoker. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we ended up doing a full gut. Okay. But when we were putting it all back together again. Um, what year was your house built in? 1875. Okay, Damn. so real Victorian. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. yeah. yeah second real Victorian, empire. real smokers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> like, that's, 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 that was probably a no-joke project. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a little bit of work. Uh, yeah, boy, it, it 
Now I know better. That one little statement says like yeah, everything, you right? You spend so much money in those types of projects. When people come and they say like that's what they want to do, like the first thing I say is like how, like why? It's like why mm. do you want this house or this? Like do you want to live in an old home? for a particular reason did you grow up in a home like what's the rooting to this because i've like we've we've built for tears because people they get so invested in owning an old farmhouse or an old victorian or something like that oh, wow. um that you just start and then they also like those you know they are so usually particular people and then when things don't start they come together or like getting them together is like this huge nightmare cuz you're taking you know, a 200 year old home and bringing it to today, it's like, you're going to have problems. It's construction plus old home construction. So you probably have a lovely home, but you probably wouldn't do it again. Um, we, we would never do it again. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it, you're hitting it all six cylinders. So do I, we, we, as we look around and we're like, yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Our next place is going to be like a double wide, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> On a sand lot? Yes, absolutely. With no neighbors? None. Yeah. yeah we, we're never doing this again. Uh, we're, we're wrapping up now our like final, final, final thing. And, and, uh, what you Don't just said a minute it. ago really. Don't say final because that's, uh, that's where you'll get you yourself. Know, fr from this day forward, it's going to be nothing other than like gardening. You know, it's <laughs> like, okay, how many tomato plants are we doing this year? That, that, that's going to be it. You know, we're never intentionally doing anything else inside. Oh, I totally, I uh, totally can yeah, understand. Yeah, when, when, when you said a minute ago about the, the, the trim and multiple layers, it's like, oh, I, I totally get that. Because our carpenter who's, oh, he's unbelievable. At this point, he's like 70. But we just like show him a photo from a magazine and he goes like, okay, I, I, I can do electrical and plumbing, but like I'm useless with carpentry, but I can appreciate it. Mm. And then we get to watch him take like literally five different pieces of wood and cut them and he used you know really archaic things that i didn't remotely understand like you know coping saw whatever the hell that is <laughs> and uh and over the it, it it was it was like time lapse it was it was beautiful and he he took this blank wall that got completely rebuilt and you know at the end of the day it's like, oh my God! It's town and country wishes they had this. It, mm. it was incredible. So yeah, I, I, I get it. I fortunately started out in construction. My first construction job um, was in historic renovation. Oh, so I kind of like so I you started. Learned you learned the hard way. I started at like the pen, we live in you know Bucks County, Pennsylvania is not short on old estate farm properties that need to you know be yeah. brought up to date and the guy i worked for that's all he did was historic properties and you know he was really good at it uh, he was kind of a flawed individual at the time and i was just a young ignorant oh. person and i just i was like you know what like this this stuff's not that hard. but i like, i didn't realize that i had started with somebody that was very very talented and also in a in like the area of construction that was also like kind of like the pinnacle and in, in a way. And I was like, Oh, I can do this. And ah. then, you know, years of misery later, <laughs> we're, we're here talking about spreadsheets. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? So it, it took some time. I always appreciated, you know, building and crafting things. Like my brother and I were really into that. Um, but it wasn't until, I guess I had to like kind of fight back up to where that guy was like that level mm. of business. Like I wanted to be at like the best or do the, the nicest projects or, you know, have people look at what we were doing and be, and like see like no matter what you were into, you could see how good we were at what we did, regardless of if you could appreciate it or not. Like that's what I was like, I got to get back up to there. And like yeah. that, that journey, like, which we're still very much on, it just, um, it made me appreciate, you know, older construction and ultimately led me to go to architecture school to kind of, like, get involved more in that. Um, and then, wow. like, subsequently over the years, continuing to be passionate in, like, that perfect construction, for lack of, like, a better, like, description, 
I like then started appreciating like coffee roasters that were really in like I would be like I would only be able to connect to people that were also equally or equally as passionate about what they were doing it was like a gift and a curse in a way yeah just like it was like like, once you started once you get serious about what you're doing you can only really look at people and like appreciate them if they're also serious Mm -hmm. about whatever they're doing yeah, when we I care less what if you yeah, think that, what I'm doing is cool. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, when we went to that event yesterday, you were like, I want to talk to the people that are like that person. Yeah, who and was it? Did you ask me who we wanted to talk to or who asked that question? I might have asked somebody you. asked the Someone question. Asked it was you. like, Well, who are you? It was a, it might have been Eric, might have been, yeah, yeah. Somebody was like, Well, what, like, what, who, who do you try and talk to at these events? And I'm like, Honestly, I try and find the people that are like the people in whatever they are doing. Whether it's like insurance, real estate, engineering, whatever it is, and like that one dude, that mortgage broker, like yeah. by like that dude was just filling space. Yeah. Like the second we started talking to him, we were like, "Oh yeah, this guy has got nothing for us." <laughs> it kind of felt the He's same. Like, yeah, my boss comes to a lot of these events. I don't, I don't really come. Yeah. Like, it was it's like, like okay. oh okay, cool dude. Like, <laughs> I'm here to try and to connect with people, and you're just like, you know, eating mini hot dogs. Like, <laughs> what do you want from me? Get away from me. I got a podcast with a coffee roaster tomorrow. Get out yeah, of my face. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even, you're not even passionate. You use don't know Jeff. Use your for the hot dogs. <laughs> Those eclairs are calling your name. Yeah, right. <laughs> eclairs. Yeah, they weren't good ones, though. They're like oh, the frozen ones. They're okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like oh. Folgers. Mm. Yeah, so we have the Folgers of eclairs. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. You just can't do that. No. I mean, it. it you spent any time in New York, it, whether you're born and raised there or just if you've been to Ferrara de Bella, you know, which is like two doors up off of Canal on Mulberry Street, then like you can't have an eclair anywhere else again. It, 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 it As you said earlier, it's like it's one of those things that ruins you. Mm. you. You can't have steak out unless you go to maybe the Palm, you know, on, on the um, Midtown on the east side. If you. If, yeah. I, I Do you ever it. find, though, it's funny you say that because I used to live um, really close to the Italian market in Philadelphia. Mm. So there's Terminis on 8th, and they've got they've got decent products. And, like, the line would be out the street, and I lived, like, a block up from there. So you could see people lining up for the product. I was never that impressed. So, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. But it sounds like I'm going to have to go to New York to eat some of these. Eclair- like, that sounds yeah. convincing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That um, sounds like he, like, knew the cross street. The, everything was laid yeah, out. There, there wasn't. There are eclairs. There are cannolis. Um, That's what Terramini is known for, the, the cannolis. Uh, there are they're, they're cream puffs. And there are, um, what are they called? Lobster claws. Mm. Um. Yeah, you you just you're just, but if you go, you're 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 screwed because you're not going to be able to have it anywhere else and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. that seems like a reoccurring theme. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's you, you kind of like have to appreciate, um, in a way, the struggle to getting to the item, not necessarily just the tastes. Mm. And that, if if something takes a little bit more work to get to, yeah. it's going to taste better. For instance, we ran the Philadelphia Marathon, and we ate at some brunch place. I can't even remember the place, and we we ate there since since that whole thing. But the only time I ever enjoyed a meal there was after that race. <laughs> and I honestly think it's just because I was exhausted from running. <laughs> and I was, like, drinking champagne. I'm like, hey, we just did this, like... <laughs> This food's good today. <laughs> it was still the same food. We just did something hard for it. Yeah, dude. It's like when you eat a sandwich and Doritos after you get out the pool. It's like this is the best damn ham sandwich I've ever had in my life, <laughs> yeah, dude. The, the, I hate mustard, but this is good mustard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bread's all soggy. Yeah, but fuck yeah. it, man. It's the best thing Hawaiian ever. Hawaiian punch. Yeah, take me back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, miss no diving. <laughs> yeah, it's all you can watch me cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> so when you... you did you ever make the transition where you went from tech to coffee back to tech, or did you just stay in coffee? Um, I think I've, I've been fortunate that I've been able to stay in coffee. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I have some involvement in my website, but I'm, I'm really not much of a like developer type per se. So I've, I've worked with other people who have like that eye. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And around the say, okay, here's my vision. You know, I can take some really good pictures. I can, you know, produce the content. But I'd rather have someone who's like really, really into it in a way that, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? Spend half a year learning how to really code well? Or do I just work with someone who's great at that and say, you know, here are my images, here's my content, do it, put it in. Yeah, I, to- I totally know what that's like, especially having, like, Gilmar around. There's, to- like, there are things that we look good doing that we wouldn't, we, it's, like, not even that interesting. But the, when Gilmar shoots it or, like, do- like, does his thing to it, it's like, wow, that's actually cool. So Thanks. I think that, like, if you, <laughs> if you let somebody else worry about your content, I think too many people worry about doing their own content. mm yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, I was fortunate that I worked in the tech industry. So uh, there, there are people who are just so good and so talented in any yeah. industry. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, do I really want to focus on building my business or do I want to build a web page? And it's like, oh, well, I, I, I want to build my business. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to like, you know, Sustain. do tastings with customers and, and, and watch the reaction across the table, you know, and, <laughs> When, when you took a sip the first time and then I just kept quiet and and then you were just like, you looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think it was like half like, you know, how dare you and half thank you. <laughs> 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 and, you know, it's like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I, I that, that that's like kind of my mission is just bringing that experience to more people yeah being able for uh god more of us realizing wow what can coffee mean to them and it's not going to be the the same thing that it means to me um hey there you go hey there (laughs) we go he he knew i I was struggling i needed some help (laughs) um and, and for some people, it's going to be like Ethiopian, you know, straight black. And for other people, it's going to be like, no, it's going to be the, it's going to be Mayan eclipse, which is just a fancy name for Guatemalan. You know, so that as Americans, you know, Guatemalan may not resonate to us necessarily. It's like great coffee country, but Mayan eclipse, ooh, that sounds romantic. Wow, yeah, let's drink that. <laughs> and so d- there's just like like wine or food, right? There's different notes. There's different characteristics. Yeah, you were kind of like an eye doctor when you came <laughs> in here. You were just like, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Do you like that one? Or do you like this one? Yeah. You know, mixing stuff. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I don't know. Better or worse? Better or Wonderful. worse. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it better this way? Or this <laughs> better way? that or way. about the same? <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the, the right bean at the right roast will be very meaningful to each easily 80 or 90 percent of people you know then then there's just some people where it doesn't matter how great it is it you know there's a few people out there where they just they just don't like coffee Mm. you know like you know some people don't like uh the rolling stones or beef or whatever it doesn't matter how it's prepared it doesn't matter how well it's performed so but for most people do you think you have the ability to like bring non-coffee drinkers to coffee Oh, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and, and that that's actually the easy part. Um, the, the more challenging part of, of the journey, the, the epiphany is, oh, this doesn't need anything. In, in fact, when you, you, know, you, you talked me to trying it black, and then you added a little half and half, and then it's like, you know what? It wasn't good that, that way. That actually took away from what it it is yeah, you, 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 you that know. happened to me with the yeah. ethiopian i i didn't even want to put half and half in this mm-hmm. and what was the other one i had the um, yeah you started with the ethiopian which which waking is dead. lighter and, and more fruity dead. and the the waking dead mm. yeah i was like oh, i'll just drink it this way yeah and for most this is people, the first time i've ever enjoyed coffee black that's why i asked you I oh. like, do you have the ability to make people oh, you, you're not just saying that no no yeah same yeah, i i thought when, the when, coffee when, when I, I, I know gilmar doesn't drink coffee when i don't. leave the studio it's not going to be like where's the spittoon no nah. <laughs> <laughs> like i i hate i not nah, i hate coffee i hate coffee black like I, I don't ever drink coffee anyway but just the thought of black coffee i'm like ew but that straight up was just really good Thank yeah you. this is folgers yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I exaggerate things, but that, but that was, one's that real. was not. <laughs> usually the exaggerations are there's only a little bit like five percent more onto it. Usually there's a lot of truth in it. <laughs> People are like, oh no, you're joking about the coffee. I'm like, no. Got a mocha mocha latte addiction. I'm oh. weaning. A, a, a chai tea latte? Yeah, that that's good. So you you, you do a, a double shot of espresso with like four to five ounces of steamed milk and uh, Oregon chai extract. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, I could bring you some of that. Damn. Sounds like a dirty chai. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it can be called the black eyed chai or a dirty chai. Yeah. I love a good dirty mm -hmm. chai. It was funny. I, I was like, oh, what would you say if we, you know, built a coffee, bought a coffee shop? And everyone was like, I don't know how to make coffee. I need to get a machine. And then ever since then, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because now we, you know, we have really good coffee at home. Now we have a steak situation with the coffee, though. And then, we, you know, I, I we heard about you. That. and Yeah, we, we heard about you. And she was like, I, I met this guy with the coffee beans. we got to have him on the podcast. And then um, that was that. And then she was back, like, every weekend since then, I think. <laughs> we only Oh, thank wow. you. Yeah. So what? how'd you come up with the name for your business? Uh, Liberty was taken. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we needed to, to, to do something about it. Because, you know, we're a, a stone's throw from Philadelphia. And it's like, ooh, you know, you know, Philadelphia, Liberty. Wouldn't you just know it? You know, Liberty Coffee is in use in, in a number <laughs> of places, a number of different states. And it's like, hmm, okay. So, you know, uh over a little over four years ago when I was like, hmm, all right, well, if, if I want to have a name and have it nationally available, what, what can I do? And it's like, well, someone actually came up with Liberty before me, really? In America? <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Uh, so, okay, hmm. Well, and then we were thinking about, like, First City. Ooh. And um, and then I honestly don't remember exactly how it happened, but it was you know, Liberty City. And, you know, we looked up the, the information. It's like, oh, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that that, that one's available. Cool. Um, and then wanted to do something cool with the logo with the Liberty Bell yeah. aspect. Oh, well, yeah, look at yeah, I, 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 nice. I take no credit for that. You know, that some very clever graphics person, you know. Yeah. I, you I, were I busy like, slinging coffee to make logos. <laughs> I, I, I'm near useless with things like photoshop <laughs> yeah I, I i can i can i can wire your house i can uh build a corporate network i can analyze application performance um yeah i i'm not a graphics person but i, I appreciate <laughs> good graphics work oh yeah right like i i can appreciate great uh trim work you know around a, a door or tile and yeah but the appreciation yeah. there do you like where? What would you say like your predominant customers are? Like, are you selling to individuals like us? Or are you selling to businesses? Like, what? Um, yeah, great question. It, it's it's a mix. Um, so prior to COVID, um, a lot of it was um, wholesale and commercial accounts, and then you know, COVID uh, it basically you know decimated that for for a lot of people in mm. what what you might call you know, food manufacturing. Um, so it, it fell all the way back to 100% consumer, um, either farmer's markets or, and or um, uh, mail order, anywhere nationwide. Um, I actually, some of my customers are in like California, Arizona, or Alaska. No idea how they find me. I, I, yeah. guess I, I guess I should figure that out someday. <laughs> well, yeah, people uh, are going to find you from this. You're going to yeah. be shipping coffee to, like, Thailand and stuff. <laughs> 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 so we look at the analytics for our show sometimes. I'm like, there's no way people are listening to us in Becca's name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch out. Well, that, that, that'll be a, a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the, the, the wholesale um, stuff is, is, is coming back, uh, which, which is great. Um, you know, more... Restaurants, cafes, you know, uh, uh, lunch trucks, food trailers are are starting to pop up more and more, which which is cool, and it, it's great 
working with those people. I honestly don't care if they want to private label it or, or use my label. I just want to have that experience, you know, uh, and you know, spread the word. Um, and then we're actually in the process of uh, building out a, our cafe. Uh, oh, you, oh, you have a physical location? Yeah, so, so you know, I've got a coffee roastery. Okay. Yeah, which, which fulfills two needs. Because, um 15,000 pounds of beans, you know. Not I imagine that house. in your living room. <laughs> yeah. Um, not so much. Um, so a whole bunch of years ago, take all the stuff and get it out of my house became a reality. And uh, uh, we're actually in our fifth year at the roastery. Okay. Uh, in, in Bristol, right on Route 13. And so I've got like 2,000 square feet. I've got a loading dock. Loading docks are great. Oh. Yeah, oh. That, that's a game changer. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Our wood shop doesn't have a like shipping dock or anything like that. And It's nice. The forklift situation is dismal at best. So sometimes unloading things are, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I think... When whenever I think like businesses like yours or anything that's gonna unload things, like the first thing I think about now is like, well, where do trucks go? Mm. And that's a lesson we've learned the hard way. Uh, I I got lucky uh, af- after like I was looking and looking for for months, and then boom, a listing popped up in my town, one mile away, right on Route 13, Bristol Pike. Um, although UPS considers it U.S. Highway 13, if you, you try to address it any other way, and they're like, eh, invalid. Can't deliver there. And it's like, everyone knows it's Bristol Pike over at 13. It's like, well, you know, we don't. Not And we're us. UPS. Yes. It's like, well, the post office recognized. It's like, we don't care. That's so, okay. When UPS or is put out of business by Amazon, they can, you know. <laughs> the, the drone will land it right on your front yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to debate it, though. I I. I I think you're really right about that. Yeah. It's going that direction. That's okay. The post office doesn't deliver to our office, but the post office is right, like, not even 100 yards away from here. Oh, wow. They, like, they're like they just like, no, nah, this building is not recognized. <laughs> like, all right, this office building doesn't get post office. This doesn't yeah, make any sense. How <laughs> do all these people in this, how do all these businesses get to post office? Yeah, right? <laughs> so they just leave a they little, just a little yeah, like, for you, come get it? Yeah, or, yeah, like, not even that. Like, we just don't get it. We just don't get the mail. That we have to get, we have like a whole nother address to ship mail to. It's ridiculous. <laughs> PO box. Don't get me started. <laughs> we'll get them back. Yeah, we'll get them back, guys. Post office. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, I guess long story short, my my initial vision was like, okay, I just want this roastery, roast my coffee. Yeah, you know, figure out what roast works with what beans, creating blends, single origins. Uh, just kind of oh, live in your bliss. And what I discovered, to my surprise, is the most fun that I have is when I'm working with individuals at a farmer's market and talking with them and sharing the experience and watching their reactions as they're taking sips and we get into conversations. It's like, huh, I guess I want a coffee shop. Because that, you know, those interactions, that's, that is so meaningful to me. It's you like could host that, those interactions. Yeah. Right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So um, I found um, a space up on uh, Woodbourne Road, um, pretty close to the Oxford Valley Mall. Okay. Um, so um, working with an architect and trying to get through all the, you know, design and permit stuff but uh you know sometime later this year that that should be open oh dude congrats wow. yeah oh, dude. Thanks. dude that's awesome yeah yeah that's awesome you'll, you'll definitely have like a frequented uh yeah my girlfriend work. will probably come by too so i'm pretty sure you met her she was with ariel so She's like, oh, yeah yeah yeah, I, I I thought that was your bodyguard. That was so that was, that's your. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is she like yeah. a bodyguard? Yeah, I mean, she's been lifting. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she, it was she, before was I got my haircut, so I think she was like, "Who's the shady person?" She was like, you know, I just standing just a little bit in between us, and <laughs> I, I think she was really ready with the the the, you know, the palm of her hand. It's like, well, yeah, don't get in the way. I, I didn't want to mess with her. 
Yeah, dude, she, dude, she left me at home. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's scary? So. <laughs> but yeah, clean congrats. your dishes. Yeah, all right, damn, relax. Yeah, like I'll, I'll do yours too. <laughs> <laughs> I wear long sleeves to hide the marks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, congrats on the space, man. That's awesome. Oh, Don't worry, she won't listen to this. <laughs> How many minutes in we are? She's definitely not listening. <laughs> yeah, <it's> an hour <laughs> forty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a full moon. There's no way. All no, right, no way. <laughs> so that's exciting. Yeah, that that's it's going to be great. That um, so other than you know all the the usual challenges, you're like okay, you, you got a space, but um, it, it it's kind of like the um, I should have learned the uh, from the earlier lesson. So you know when I bought the Victorian, I said to myself, "You, you guys are really going to get this." I said, "Hmm, how hard could it be?" <laughs> 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 and wouldn't you just know it? You know, um, I do that multiple times. Like I do that. S- I do that kind of like for a living now. I have a car to be, <laughs> and it costs me dearly a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, give or take, um, you know, thirteen years later, and being a professional coffee roaster, um, I was like, okay, I, I want to open up a cafe. Found a space. You know, signed a lease. How hard could it be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> here we go. Yeah. What um your current business like the way are you gonna like consolidate your two locations into one into the new one location or are you gonna keep like roasting separate from like the coffee shop? Uh yeah, great question. Um so current vision is to keep roasting at the roastery and the the coffee shop be the coffee shop slash cafe. Mm. So um, one is roasting. You need a fair bit of space for all the beans and and you know the the tables and the scales and the the roaster itself and, and all of that. Um, but it's it's noisy and the aroma is not for everybody. Mm. So I, I, you, you may well love the smell of fresh brewed coffee or fresh ground coffee. You may or may not like the smell of fresh roasted coffee when there's 50, 100, 200 pounds of it sitting in bins all around you. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's intense. How many people do you have working in, like, the roastery? Like, what does it take to run a place like that? Uh, at the moment, um, with, with COVID, it's, it's fallen back to, you know, yours truly. I'm one-man band. but No way. Yeah. That's um, kind of the way to be, in my opinion. It's a lot easier. At at that level, it's a different level of business. But when it's left up to kind of just you to to do it, like there's a level of thoroughness that you lose as soon as you start hiring people. Yeah. Well, when it comes to the roasting, no one gets to touch that but me. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, roasting is not like baking or cooking. Um I don't care how talented somebody is. You you just can't say, well, follow this and end up with, you know, Gordon Ramsay level, whatever. It, it roasting's um it's intimate, it's in, it's involved and the beans do not the beans want to cut loose and not follow their instructions. Uh, there there's a certain level of uh of chaos. That occurs. So even though you're pl- you're using exactly the same beans and exactly the same weight, and you're using the same wattage and the same loft, they want to veer away from what you want them to do. So mm-hmm. you you can listen to like music when you're roasting, but you're basically you're sitting there and you're roasting, and you're making little adjustments because the the heat profile will start to to. It's like driving a car where you can't hold the wheel. You know, you, you have you're, to drive you're, it allowed, you're, allowed, you're allowed to touch it and push it back, but then you you have to put hands off. Roasting is kind of like that, um, and the you know it'll start to swerve a little, and you see you need to bring it back to where you want it. Um, so, you know, f- from a certain sense, it's like it's too bad that it's not like baking. But if it if it were. Uh, there would probably be a lot of great coffee out there. Yeah. Um, but it's like, nope. You, you need to, like, find great beans, store them properly, roast them in batches of the right 
size um, so that it's really controlled. Um, and then you've got to just sit there and control that roast. You, you have moments where you can take like a minute or two and kind of just like ease back, you know, scratch from this or something, but it's, it's, it's involved. Mm. How, like when you're like, how big of a roast is it? Like when you're making all those beans, you put like, how many beans do you start with? Or like what pounds do you start with when you put it in the roast? Uh, so I do small batch roasting. Okay. Uh, Cause it, my first and foremost, I, I want to have really serious control over the, the end result. Um, and with, with roasting coffee, it's, it's not just taking beans from room temperature and bringing it up to, as an example, um, 440 Fahrenheit. The, the journey of how you bring the, the seeds, the beans up there has a dramatic effect on the cup, on what you will experience later when you brew it, whether it's espresso or French press or, or whatever, cold brew. Um, the, the, the flavors, the notes, uh, so like wine, coffee, they, they have some similarities. They have hundreds and hundreds of flavor compounds. Um, coffee has about twice as many as wine. Okay. And so you can kind of like pick and pull on those little yes. compounds. Yeah. Okay. So, so the journey of the roast, um, especially from when we first dry seeds now we're entering the um the, this will really resonate to your world that maillard effects right mm. when, when you cook a steak well you're going to sear it and then finish it slow right right because you like lock it, it in yeah but yeah. It, if your pan was let's say 350 instead of 500 that's not going to be a great steak now you're going to burn the outside and then the inside's going to not be where you want it to be yeah, yeah. so so drying the the, the beans that's pretty flexible. Mm -hmm. the, the beans don't care as much about coming from, say, say 70 degrees up to about 315. You're not really uh, introducing or creating chemical. So it's like a, a thermo chemical. Dry. Yeah, yeah, you're just basically drying the beans out from like 11 to 13% moisture down to like 1% to 2%. The last little yeah, bit. Yeah, na now you're causing chemical reactions to take place and you're creating and destroying different compounds from that point forward. So you dry, like the drying process is done. It's like, air, like you air dry, then you put it in the machine to do the last like 11 to 13%. And yeah. then, then you start roasting from there. Well, the, the whole thing is still called the roast. That's and all the roast. Yeah. The, everything from the time that you uh, charge the roaster chart, it's uh, so you're dropping the beans into the roaster, mm -hmm. but that's called charging because uh, at the very end of the roast, it's actually called dropping the roast because you, on in traditional roasting machine, a, a drum roaster which I don't use, uh, you would lift up a lever and then the beans would drop into the cooling chamber. So the end of the roast is always called drop. Mm -hmm. So they had to figure out some kind of a word that wasn't drop for loading the beans in and charge happens to be it. Mm. Um, so I use an air roaster. Mm. So it's basically a very uh, kind of high-tech complex version of an air popper. I get to control um, my, my wattage, my, my loft. Um, you were asking about size, like how big are my batches. Um, so I tend to do about five-pound batches. Okay. I can roast more. Um, think well, of this, this way. is so, like so how much is in this bag right here? This is uh, what's this is like eight grams. Th that's a half a ounces, half a pound bag. Seven. Yep. Yeah. So I will get um, basically a little over eight of those when I do a batch. I mean, if, if I want to, I can roast a little bit more and be able to produce like nine of those bags. But that's that one's a that one's a blend. That one's uh, in Indonesian and Peruvian. How long does it take to do that, to roast? Like what's the roast length? Um, most of the time, a roast will be, for me, let's say between about 9 and 11 minutes, usually. Um, a, a roast has to be pretty quick. 
See, um, I was picturing you like all night at the helm. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> three a.m. Sweating. <laughs> oh my, there's a roast. <laughs> like it was easier for Christopher Columbus to sail to America. Yeah, than right. these Roasts are going down. That's what I was picturing. Well, most of the time I'm roasting like Fantasia like, down in the Bristol. <laughs> Fantasia. Uh, let's say five pound batches. Okay. So I I can just sit there, you know, put on Pandora Lincoln Park and. You know, two, three, four hours later, I, I've got a, a lot, a lot of coffee that I can take, single origin blends, whatever. So you're dropping it in, roasting, maybe d- labeling something or something, coming back to it. It's constantly doing that for, you know, a few hours until you have like an entire shipment, I guess. Yep. And uh, I, I, some of the beans will stay single origin. Some of them I will blend. Uh, like Crazy Llama, you know, this one here, that's... Um, half Indonesian from an island called Sulawesi, um, which is near, Sum- so you've heard of Sumatra. Mm. And of course you've heard of Java, synonymous with coffee. Mm. Well, that's because the Dutch traders who stole the original coffee plants from uh, the Middle East and who got away with it because they lived. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. They still had their hands. <laughs> um, the first place that the Dutch traders went to, which an island also known as, as Java, and so that became synonymous with coffee. Uh, wow. Indonesia has an amazing climate that's like literally perfect for coffee. But that coffee is not for everybody because the, the volcanic soil imparts an earthiness. Mm-hmm. So um, if this I is take... Re- this is yeah, deep. This I, is really... There's so many levels to... Like, I, I guess this is with anything that grows from the earth, but it kind of seems like the coffee, depending upon where the soil or, you know, the aggregate it's growing in, dictates stuff. The sun quality probably dictates the, co- like, the co- air quality, cloud cover, cl- like, temperature, humidity. Yeah. So you, do you have, like, a certain region of the world that you kind of, like go-to in terms of like mm. you, you prefer coffees from like you know the the southernmost beach of this place i don't know it, it, no it's, it, it's it's a really interesting good question um the, the, the short answer is i don't have preferences in regions mm. um what i do have is just really high standards as far as uh what the coffee has to be in the cup um So my roasting process is uh, I'll get in lots and lots of samples and take each of the samples, roast them different ways, and then do blind tasting. And I I think blind tasting is the only way of doing it. I I, I don't want to know at the cupping table if something is Peruvian or Ethiopian or Guatemalan or whatever. I I don't want preconceived notions, right? Like um, you, you love steak. Yeah. I love so if I told you in blind tasting that something was filet mignon before you tasted it, you would have expectations. Mm. If I simply said, keep your eyes closed and then fed you pieces of ribeye, filet mignon, you know, et cetera, well, it would be you'll react to the experience. Yeah. So I'll agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like before I, you see a movie and someone tells you, like their opinion on it, then you go in with that expectation, like, oh, this movie's going to suck. But whether just go in with it blindly, like, you know, it is what it is for me. Like, I don't want your influence. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if there's, like, a way to kind of, like, get to that zen level where you can kind of just go into stuff. Just blindly. As blindly as possible. Mm-hmm. But I definitely, I think with something as flavorful as coffee, it could possibly be easy to get a bias if you're, you know, you have a really, really good flavor one time. You're going to, like, maybe be, like, biased to that Peruvian seed versus, yeah, maybe. I don't know. No, no, you, you're absolutely right. And you, 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 you hit on something, like, really um, insightful when you mentioned that depending upon it, soil and and. and dozens of other climatic conditions completely affect what that what that bean what that seed will become mm. um, 
just like wine, and, and the two are inc- have so much in common. Uh, the French have a term, a terroir, ter- terroir. Oh, my God, I'm totally butchering the pronunciation. That's good. None of us um, speak French here. And uh, <laughs> I, I apologize to my, my French teacher back in fourth grade. You you know what a disappointment I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you turn, um, you're roasting coffee. You're, yeah. not, you're not a translator. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, 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 I think it's uh, pronounced uh, ter- terroir. Okay. Oh. And it's it's the impact of uh, the the soil on how that will contribute to uh, the the grape and the, and the vine. And so you could take exactly the same seeds, like a like an El Salvador uh, a Bourbon, and whether you grow it in the uh, highlands of El Salvador, which which ours is from, or you take that same, it, it it's like a like. To, to, to go back to wine, it would be, let's say, the equivalent of a um, it's a, like a Chardonnay grape, right? But depending upon where you grow that, same thing with coffee. Um, you can get chocolate notes or nuttiness or earthiness. Is it that end result and what kind of a what kind of rainfall they had, what kind of year they had, what, were, were they picked yeah, what at the, the height of harvest? What Every, the plant's everything uptake was in terms of, do yeah. you get into the, like the uptake of the plants at all? Like, are you involved well, in, like, do you have communication with the farms where you're like, hey, like, are you guys monitoring like the nutrient? Like, is there any sort of that level of involvement? Um, only a little bit. I, I, I want to get more toward direct trade involvement. Uh, but, Coffee farmers, they are like the hardest working people on the planet. Yeah. Um, so. Because they're all caffeinated. To, to, to get one pound of roasted coffee uh, takes picking at least 1,000 coffee cherries, usually by hand on hills that are like at least that steep in, you know, in the tropics. So how many, so like. My question would be, how many trees is that? Like, how many trees are a thousand cherries? Um, like, how many ch- cherries? I guess does one tree produce? Maybe. Well, that's a that's a good question. Because I was um, going to be like, well, would you ever grow your own trees? But now, when you say that, like, you would. I don't know how many trees you would need to even fill this bag right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? I honestly don't have a a great answer to how many pounds of cherries come off of a single tree i i, I believe that can we it, it that can up? vary um yeah yeah would you please google that it takes five uh, it, yeah five yeah it, it takes like i think at least three years for it to start like producing yeah. but then it probably four or five years before it's really a, a mature enough plant to so from seedling have a bigger harvest from seedling three years until it's producing any sort of like fruit, and then probably another two or a few. I years. mean, it may produce some fruit a little earlier, but not in any volume. not any value. It it, it needs to have a, a really uh, built up root structure, it, and that takes time. Uh, just like a, especially you, you in that type of like mountain earlier, type soil, right? Would that, that you don't want asparagus to be like perfect, mm-hmm. um, and asparagus uh, takes easily three to four years to have enough of a ridge structure where you'll be able to have a good harvest off of it. Blueberries are Maybe similar. I'll start appreciating my asparagus. <laughs> 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 yeah, boy, what asparagus. do we got here? We got pounds of coffee per tree. The average coffee tree produces 10 pounds of coffee cherry per year mm. or two pounds of green beans yeah so so the coffee cherry is the overall fruit yeah and the coffee right. the, the seeds are what are inside the cherries yeah exactly okay yeah so, so you'll have typically two seeds per cherry so when they say two pounds of green seeds or green beans green meaning before they're roasted correct so yeah and then you, you lose as, yeah, that was my between. Expression. Let's say typically somewhere between on the, on the low end, twelve to thirteen percent, up to maybe eighteen percent during roasting. My, I, I typically just and that's um, all. Is that all moisture that's burning off? Like, what? Where's um, that weight going? So you're you're losing moisture, 
Um, and you're also losing um, what we call chaff or silver skin. So you don't, on, on green beans, you really don't see it, but there's this thin layer of cellulose or parchment that during drying comes flying off and, you know, and, and, it, and, it, and it's neat. I, I could bring over piles of it on, on Saturday if you wanted, if you're going to do any gardening at the condo. Is it good? Pro- is it good compost? Oh, it's great compost. I have a garden. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll get some of that. Garden. Yeah, for, we'll friend of mine is, of is, a, is a farmer, and he's just like, give me all your coffee grounds, give me all your silver skin. I'll, yeah. I'll take all of it. Yeah, we'll have some of this. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, so, so most of what it loses is moisture, but then you also have a that little protective j- layer and everything yep. like that. Mm. Yeah, it, it's just this fluffy cellulose stuff. Is it is it hard to propagate like coffee <laughs> seeds or coffee beans? Like, could you? Uh, I'm a coffee roaster, not a coffee farmer. <laughs> yeah. <the> <laughs> yeah, I'm like trying to think here. I'm like, we could grow but some it, but trees, it, but, it, but, it, but, I, but I know people. Yeah, um, yeah I, we I, have I, a we have a buddy of ours um, that he lives he lives life what, what we call exciting style. He he bought a coffee roaster. You remember this? Yeah. Yeah, spent like 50 grand on a coffee roaster with the intentions on roasting coffee. Mm. And then there was supposed to be like a trip to like, where were we supposed to go? Coast? Panama. But yeah, we we're supposed to go. Where were we supposed I to I think go? it was Panama. Yeah, yeah, so we were supposed to go to Panama to this coffee farm to like set it all up. And then some other bad decisions were made with another business he had. And then the coffee thing. I think the roaster is still sitting there. Damn. But. That would have been so cool to witness. You, that was like, wow. so you, that, that was so my there, first there, there's experience. There's still a roaster that was purchased that's just sitting in his packaging? Uh, in the, f- the, the f- you mean like the freight packaging? Yeah, it's like a massive piece of equipment. In the U.S. or Panama? It's in Fishtown. Oh, wow. Yeah. You want to go see it? <laughs> yeah, let's go they see They need it. money. Um, well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're actually in luck because the, the value... Uh, especially in the last... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, we don't know if we want to tell them how valuable <laughs> the machine yeah, is. So we might be able to do it to you. <laughs> uh, I'll no, just I'm impart kidding. the information to you. And yeah. You <laughs> <watch> <laughs> yeah, we might not release this episode until we get <laughs> this deal done. Do, you, do you want to turn it off for like... Thir- you know what? <laughs> no, 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 we just use all you for 30 seconds and they'll <laughs> yeah. someone's lip reading you. They won't know. Yeah, um, yeah co- uh, coffee roasters are the value of them. Uh, especially during Corona, is like skyrocketed. Oh my! You know, just like if you lumber, right? Yeah, yeah. So the the same roaster that you could have bought two or three years ago is probably twice as expensive now. Damn. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip a coffee machine right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And five um, percent uh, is a reasonable commission for that information. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. We'll take our normal fifteen percent. And we'll jack that up to twenty percent, and we'll give you that five. Oh, there cool. You yeah, see, or, we're we're reasonable or, uh, businessmen. T- t- tell you what, um, <laughs> give me uh, twenty dollars, and I'll give you this bag of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> How about I give you what's ever in my pocket? <laughs> Soul, which is nothing. A lot of business going on here. <laughs> it's, been hard, it's been a hard week. <laughs> it's okay. I, I I take Venmo. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Jeff, like. Do you, how do people find you? Do people do you have Instagram? What, where are you at right now? Uh, so technically, I'm on Instagram, but un, until the cafe is open, yeah, you're lying. It, it's um, so Liberty City Coffee, which will be the cafe. It it it, it, it makes sense for that to be like an Instagram kind of thing. Yeah, but um, uh, the the roastery, I've got um, uh, I've got my own page. I've got. They find me on Google. They find me on Facebook groups. So honestly, you just um, search Liberty City Coffee and they'll find you. If you just search, you know, coffee roasters, people somehow find me. Uh, I'm at the farmer's market in Yardley Yeah, every Saturday. Okay. Um, yeah, that's – and that, that's why I'm here. Right? That's, that's how this that's, all That's started. how I got found. That's what Ariel yeah. recruits people from for her for her doings. <laughs> yeah, you recruit a lot of friends and things out of those places. There, you're like friends with the pie lady. You got like all, like you, when I hear about the farmers market thing, I just imagine you like just walking around like the queen, just like waving to all the guests. <laughs> you're like, yes, the asparagus was especially fresh this week. The pie man. 
Uh, I've th- been lied is, to. That's Mike. Oh yeah. That's Mike. Uh huh. Blueberry. I'm all over that. Wait, the blue bar, the blueberry. We haven't tried that. Uh, that's because by the time you get there, I've already bought it. Oh. Yeah. He brings one pie, one blueberry a week, and it, you know, before they're open, I snap that up. Sorry. Oh my God! <laughs> Tell him this yeah, week I, we need a I second blueberry. I am exactly blueberry. that selfish. Oh no, we're yeah. going on vacation. <laughs> Yeah, I heard someone's been destroying pies at home. So. Yo. <laughs> Yo, dude, my addiction is out. Bro, I still have mine. I think. I dude, I'm, I'm about, one. I'm probably down, I'm down a pie and a half pie. Yeah, damn. Dude, yeah, we, yeah, we ate a whole pie by Tuesday last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a team player. There, You know, you got to get to the pie while it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, a piece of pie to me is like a quarter of the fucking pie. Yeah. Like, I'm literally just like, I go mm. up to the pie and I'm like, I wa- I got, I got, I walked up here. This pie is delicious. I've got to have at least a quarter of it. Come me the usual, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've started to scale back, but then I'll have like, I'll be like, oh, just give me a little piece of each pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah. Yeah. I was, at her, I was like, you buy two pies when you go there today. And she's like, I'm not buying you two pies. It's looking out for you, bro. Yeah, I got those two pies. She loves <laughs> me. Yeah, he, actually, he, he does bring more than one blueberry. But you need to get there early yeah. or reserve it. Mm. Mm. What's his name? Solly Brothers. Solly Brothers. Solly Brothers. Nice. Solly Brothers Farms. Yeah, yeah, That's oh, yeah. Really good. Yeah, it, it, his stuff's pretty off the hook. Oh. Yeah. 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 Pies bomb. Yeah, Not I had apple, this. Huh? I had this whole rationale the other day when I was like, I'm gonna have another piece of pie. And her girl's like, You're gonna be out of pie by tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm like, No, I won't. <laughs> Gilmar and I are going out on Tuesday night. Yeah. We got a podcast on Wednesday. I'm busy Thursday night. I I can make this pie stretch until Friday. Exactly. I don't know, dude. I might get home too early tonight. Nah, bro. <laughs> You gotta stay here a little Defeat longer. Some pie. Uh, <laughs> and it, it, right next to Mike, you've got um, uh, the, the the mushroom lady. Oh my god! Have you had the the, the lion's mane? I haven't tried the fresh lion's mane, but I saw. Oh my god! Yeah, they, she does all like the fre- the lion's mane and all the. Does she do like blue oyster mushrooms mm-hmm. and everything? Like oh, that? their oyster mushrooms are yeah. the best I've ever had. Well. And, you know, as a steak eater, right? I mean, there's yeah. almost nothing better than oyster some mushrooms sauce, with yeah, it. Some oh. mushrooms on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So she's foraging for these mushrooms? No, she's she's not a farm, Okay, okay. I didn't know if you were buying some like rogue Tyler State Park mushrooms or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, there, these there are some, some Core Creek hitters. What do forage for? Um, yeah, it's the rams. Uh, y- yes. Like yeah, it, it's like a, it's, it's some sort of a garlic tasting. Yeah, it, it it's like a a wild vegetable. Uh, apparently, they're incredibly difficult to grow yourself. So they you, have you, to grow you, you, in their own space, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. We, I don't know what happened with the whole mu- the mushroom the mushroom thing started with for us with um, was it the the reishi elixir tea the mushroom tea was that what we started with, and now. Now we're just. I feel like everything's everything's going mushrooms. It's good for you. Yeah, I don't know. we'll see. But I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. And I appreciate Thank you bringing you. this coffee. This so is a great time. Me. This this is great. I I was like so, just like honored and surprised. Like like really, you want me talking on you know, the internet? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, yeah, no. I will. Okay. I. Like, we go into this always pretty open, but you definitely did not disappoint. Mm-hmm. You had all the all the stuff. Well, I, I, I brought the product. You know, so. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're all fired up. Yeah, passionate. right. Got us all. This episode's amazing. Caffeine up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Jeff. Um, Andrew, thank you. If you're looking for some of Jeff's coffee, which I would highly recommend, especially like Gilmar doesn't even like coffee and he liked this. So if that's not enough for you, then I don't know what is. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and then don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, 
Go find Jeff. Go find the Instagram. Reach out to Gilmar if you're having trouble looking good on the internet. Got you. Because he, we were out networking last night, and people were like, "You can make me look good." He's like, "I got you." That's and he I threw do. on a fake. He threw on a fake Guatemalan accent to really sell it. So I, might I definitely see some leads coming through. <laughs> Gilmar's it. gonna be extra busy, so get get into his uh, email box. Right. Got to look international. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks, everybody.